Uh, I'm Jeff DeBucco here at the Woodrow Wilson Center's Environmental Change and Security Program, and I'm joined by Mark Levy, who's the Deputy Director at Columbia University of something called Season, which is a terrific resource for capturing all sorts of data and managing data that really help us, I think, answer some of the key questions we're struggling with here at the Wilson Center and, and in the fields of study that we do. Mark, can you talk about what kind of, particularly in the area of population, because you guys have a, a really robust data set there, what are the kinds of questions, kind of practical policy questions, that uh, you think your data sets could help folks answer? Well, we've put a lot of work over the last 15 years into taking all the world's censuses and putting them together into a consistent, comprehensive, geographic database. So um, anything that requires that you locate people with respect to some geographic feature uh, you can do very easily with this database. It's called the Gridded Population of the World, or GPW. Um, uh, so the, the, the world is divided up into some 500,000 separate census units. They're all placed on the map, and then we can locate people uh, you know, fairly precisely in space. So if you want to ask questions about how people are located with respect to uh, drought hazards, for example. You can take your map of the location of droughts, um, overlay it with our map of population, um, and then you can get a sense of how many people are located in these drought zones. You can do the same thing with other types of natural hazards, uh, earthquakes, landslides, floods, and so on. Um, or you could do it with uh, you know, conservation areas. So a lot of the big conservation NGOs use our maps to identify uh, high priority uh, conservation zones that are located near high concentrations of people. Uh, we've also recently been doing modeling of emerging infectious disease risk, um, and we found that the proximity of high concentrations of wildlife with high concentrations of people uh, is the strongest predictor of new diseases emerging. Um, and so without this you know, geographic database of where people are located, we wouldn't have been able to do that scientific work. And then do you, um, can you say something about both uh, the over time to, so that folks can see change over time and how, how the data set um, addresses that? And then what are the practical ways that people can access this data and how do, how do they find it and how do they use it? Sure. Tracking changes over time precisely, mm -hmm. geographically, is one of the big challenges, and we can do this currently to a limited extent. Um, if you take all the censuses and map them, and then you know, stack them on top of each other, you can get a rough sense of how things are changing. Um, but unfortunately, where the change is the most rapid, you have this uh, artifact that people tend to redraw the boundaries of the census units because they are interested in knowing more precisely what's going on there. Um, and so that makes it challenging to figure out the precise change spatially. But we do what we can. And um, so, for example, we've done things like look at uh, ecosystem types um, and rough aggregate population growth trends. Um, we did this for the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment a few years ago. Uh, one of our findings was that in the world's dry lands, uh, which have a hard time supporting high levels of human well-being, uh, you had the highest level of growth rate in human populations. Uh, so this was a, a cause for some alarm. Uh, in terms of getting the data, finding the data, looking at it, uh, we try and uh, make the data sets available through a variety of means. Um, so if all you want is a map of a country or a region, then we have a map gallery. You do a simple search, you can find the map for your country, and you can get a, a picture of it. Put it in a report, put it in a PowerPoint, or whatever. Um, if you want to play around with the raw data, um, then we make that available for download in GIS format. So you have to be able to work with a geographic information system software to, to do that. Um, and then we also uh, publish our data in, a, in an open web mapping service uh, so that um, things like Google Earth can pick it up. And so, uh, so lots of people put together packages that integrate our population data with other things 
and as long as you can run Google Earth, then you can get to it. Um, and finally, we produced a, a tool with some partners called Terra Viva, which is easy to run, doesn't require GIS experience, um, runs on a DVD, you don't have to install special software, um, and it lets you generate maps and visualize and explore these kinds of data in connection with other geographic features. Well, thank you, Mark. This is very helpful. I've certainly become convinced as someone who hasn't done a lot of the playing with the data, as you say, that um, you folks at Season have a lot to offer the broader social science community as well as the practitioner community and, and with data that are provided free. So thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate thank you.